Oh my, what is this? I'm all purple. I look like the purple man. Hey YouTube, welcome back. What is going on? Thanks for stopping by uh, the channel. Uh, this is my new video. I shaved. I hadn't shaved in like two years, like all the way down. And I did the other day just for like a, I wanted to feel fresh. And instead my face froze when I went outside and my dog didn't recognize me when I got out of the shower. So it didn't go as planned, but I'm back. It's growing back. I got that Don Johnson thing going on, right? Right? Thanks for stopping by. This is my new video where I'm gonna tell you guys how I made my new custom action figure commission. Uh, this is Hazmat from the X-Men. Little six inch Marvel Legends scale. There's the back of her, there's the front of her. Uh, there's her helmet, she's in there. Look at, her, look at that look she's giving you, what is that? She's like, I'm gonna toxify you. Tox, she probably doesn't sound like a uh, middle-aged redneck. But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how to make that, how I made her. Before I do that, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video and subscribe and subscribe to the channel. I already said that. Uh, bell icon will let you know when I have a new video. At the moment, it's a little random. I know you, you folks like to see them once a week, and I like to make them once a week. Uh, but it's all just a matter of time and having the, uh, the means and the funds to do that. So uh, do make sure you do that. That's how that's how we uh, YouTubers keep doing, right? Got my friends here. I'm at my work table. This is the new set up. I keep looking up into the cosmos for some reason when I should be looking right there. There. What is happening? Uh, let's get into it, shall we? I'm going to pass it over to myself and to show you folks how I made my custom hazmat figure, all the tools that I used, and the means by which I made her. Also, all that stuff is going to be in the description, all the links to everything that I used and uh, to make her. So be sure to be sure to check that out, as well as links to my social media uh, affiliate stuff and the patreon so check all that out i'm gonna pass it over to me me take it away do it here we go uh again i got my trusty silicone brush with the tool thing to poke so there's no damage done so here's the uh, hazmat figure um awesome project as i've probably already said I have here all our accessories and the paints that I use, which really wasn't that much. I also have, let me pull these guys into the frame, some of the tools that I used. Uh, let's see, should we go through the tools first? Let's do that. I always use my trusty, trusty, I'm gonna probably say that a lot. It's just like a little pick, metal pick thing tool. This one's really old, this is my first one, love it. You can scrape paint, you can make lines, whatever, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's just like a good multi-tool to have. Um, I got my, I think I've showed you this guy, uh, showed you guys this before. It's the clip from a knife. I love it because it's got this flat, smooth, uh, rounded edge. And that allows me to sort of, you know, smooth out paint. If there's a bubble, um, I can open up paint jars with this. I do that all the time. I'll wedge it in here underneath the thing and wedge that up when they, when they kind of freeze up. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with that. Very cool do it, DIY tool. You got your tweezers that I use. You know, I have a dog. You can get a dog hair in the paint. You got to pull it out, something like that. And then uh, if that does ever happen, it's going to leave a line where the, where the hair was. Take some acetone, very, very carefully and very small amount of acetone uh, on a brush or a Q-tip and very carefully smooth that out and then repaint it because you don't want that line in there. Gotcha. Uh, although there is no artist without flaws, so remember that as well. And then the rest of the tools were um, just paintbrushes. All kinds of different sizes and widths and lengths. Uh, again, I, I really like these Artist Loft, I believe that is the uh, default brush of Michael's uh, art store or whatever it's called. Michael's does not sponsor this video. Michael's, if you're watching, Michael, if you're watching, uh, reach out, give me a call. And then these I got at Dick Blick's, uh, what are they called, Princeton? Uh, Dick Blick doesn't sponsor this video. Dick, if you're listening, reach out. And uh, again, I said, like I said, all different kinds of uh, 
widths and sizes. I'd say I use this one here that I'm pointing at the most for uh, coverage, wide coverage. I really like this guy, obvious uses. This one has a longer brush tip uh, to reach long, you know, hidden places, whatever. I use this guy a lot. What number is this? Two. Uh, for like wide lines and medium coverage. And then I've got a few of these like really small tips like that. You always want, whoa, oh, he's on the floor. Uh, you always want really small tips to uh, do some fine, fine painting, fine line painting. Speaking of lines, I did all these lines by hand. I didn't tape. Uh, I'm pretty good at that. Uh, although I recommend taping if you are not good at that. <laughs> and eventually I will probably, because I'll get like a shaky hand every once in a while with too much coffee. So the figure started out as a mix of white tiger body some Hellcat, Marvel Legends Hellcat uh, legs, some lower legs, and what else? I think, oh, Rogue. There's some Rogue pieces in here. I used two of these Toy Biz uh, X-23 heads, one inside the helmet, one outside. And then the helmet itself is a is from a Goliath Outer Spaceman figure. Shout out to Gary. Gary's a good guy over there. Um, and I lots of sculpt on this one. The whole thing is sculpted. And uh, and again, you guys check out the Patreon. Uh, there's all my behind the scenes photos are on Patreon, so you can see how this was sculpted, the stages of the sculpt. I document all the behind the scenes pretty in depth on the Patreon with photos. Um, so once I had the figure kit bashed put together, I did my joint prep. Very important, even though. Like you can tell, I left the yellow gold of the figure here because it almost matches exactly the yellow of the suit. And at that point, there's no real reason to uh, paint that because this plastic is gonna shed uh, chip paint anyway, unless you really, really sand it down really well, which I did, but whatever. Uh, the shoulders also were already yellow, so those are not painted or painted very lightly. So once I did my joint prep, oh, another thing for joint prep, I, I reached under here, her torso, there's a pretty good gap, which you want on most figures so that when you pose them, uh, you know, you're not gonna get any paint rub or anything going on when you do that. Uh, what else, what else? I hit them all, I hit all the joints, the wrist, the elbow, shoulder, the torso, the neck, uh, the, let's see, the knees, the ankles, I even carved out here under the hips and I carved out here in the shoulder well because you don't want the, you know, when you put your put your arm up or whatever to scrape any paint. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, joint prep. It's very important. Once that was done, I started painting and I did base coats. So I started out with this one a little darker on the yellow and my camera is showing you, I guess my hand looks regular but it's showing you very, very bright yellow. Um, almost the contrast is off on this, just FYI. Um, it's more of a, in real life, I don't know how to fix that on my camera, but in real life, this is more of a mustard, I guess, than like a, a not a brownish mustard, but just a, a nice insignia yellow rather than this contrast of yellow that's going crazy there. So I apologize for that, but you get the point. Um, layers, and I mixed in, so I used my Insignia Yellow from Testers, um, and then I would I mixed in a little bit of the leather from Testers to give it that darker, almost like a brown mustard. And then once I had that total coverage, I slowly layered lighter. I would fade out uh, a little bit, little bit lighter, a little bit lighter on each coat. Man, I don't even know how many coats of yellow I put on this figure. Probably 20 or something. I don't know, 15, something like that. So once she was covered, um, the base of the figure, so from the neck down, she has no sculpt, but from but this head has a lot of sculpt, uh, and so is this one. So that's the body. The body was all yellow, um, and then the black was painted 
by hand and you can see how straight a lot of all these lines are and there's the design on the body black lines black lines all the way around Let's see if we can raise this hand so and she's got her you know her toxic motif on her chest so as far as this head goes though what I had to do was first I took both these heads and I sculpted the hair um, so this hair on this head on both these heads are sculpted 100% little wisps there it's the exact same thing on the inside except that the back of her head is flat I cut it off so that it would fit in the helmet which you don't see that anyway so it doesn't matter but they're the exact same head, sculpted the exact same way with the hair. And the hair was done one layer for the majority of the, of the haircut, and then the wisps were done afterwards. Uh, let's take a better look at that. So you can see here like a little, whoosh, whoosh, little wisp here and there. And when you're doing stuff like that, you, you don't want tons. You want, you know, less is more. But a little bit of uh, texturing goes a long way. Then with the helmeted head, I started out with, it's like, imagine a space helmet, and again, the pictures are on the Patreon, uh, that slides up, had a shield, face shield that slides up. So I glued that in place, so it was um, just a round, uh, it didn't move, and it was just a round space helmet. And then I sculpted, uh, or sculpted, I put the head in on, on a platform on the inside, and let's see if I can show you guys. So inside here, there's a platform that her head is mounted on. And I sculpted all the way around one big layer, sort of like a, a sphere, um, and then trimmed out the visor area uh, space. Uh, once that was done, I did uh, the ridge here. So you can see it's raised along the way, the fur this yellow ridge, and then the shape of the mouth or ventilator piece uh, came next, sort of molding it outward. And then a, a, a separate layer are these vents here. These are textured ridges. And then another another separate layer are these triangular things. Those are, those are raised details as you can sort of see. So that's that head. Um, that's both the heads. So once that was done, I also had to uh, fit in here and you can see I had to dremel out the inside of the head and then replace it with a chunk of plastic and then re-drill the hole to fit this neck peg here and both heads fit nicely well proportioned height high on the neck or the, the height on the neck is accurate uh, and then came painting of the faces or the the helmet. Um, the helmet was done, per, the, both the faces were painted the same way. I, I always start with the black of the hair, or the hair, the, hair black, the dark colors first, black of the hair, then the, the face that I mixed uh, my own special uh, skin tone out of flat white and the uh, leather. Added a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red to make it more skin tone. Uh, plus, she, she's uh, she's uh, younger, so I wanted to make sure she had that sort of vibrant look to her. Uh, she's a teen. Um, the lips came next, and then before I did any eye, eye stuff, I did a dry brush of blue across her hair, as you can see, to bring out the highlights, to give it a little bit of tone and texture. Then I go in with the details of the face. Folks, if you're painting eyes, you just got to be patient. Uh, it, it is a pain in the butt, but you have to be very patient, very steady, with some small, fine tip brushes. Uh, she has brown eyes, so she's got brown eyes. Uh, another little tip that I like to do is maybe add a little touch of this Liquitex gloss varnish, just a little, one brush over each eye, and it gives it sort of a real, like, realistic glint to it, uh, which I like. So that's that head. Uh, this one, very simple, black and yellow. Uh, the hardest part was getting this line here to be, you know, smooth and not straight, but pretty, whatever you call it, uh, 
clean, the clean line. Um, and then with the yellow, I did the black, a couple layers of it, uh, came back with the yellow over top, a couple layers, and then I put a very faint yellowish brown um, uh, wash in the, in the vents here, just to bring out, give it a little, make it stand out a little bit. So, um, that is the figure. Now, I also gave her this invisible woman shield with a toxic paint job. And I didn't have any clear uh, paints. I usually keep a, some clear paints with me. So you can see this is still translucent. Uh, what I did was I grabbed some of this gloss, Liquitex gloss varnish, and I mixed in just slightly, just a few drops of uh, my insignia yellow over there. Mixed it up, painted that until I felt like the coverage was good and, and toxic enough. And then I did uh, a bunch of little black circles and green circles. Some of them are overlapped, black over green, some of them are green over black, and that gives her her toxic effect. And I also gave her interchangeable hands, so she's got sort of grasping hands here. And then she's got her power hands, whatever you want to call them. So in, uh, in action or whatever, the hand fits perfectly into the effect. And she's got her little toxic, I'm toxic effect. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. That be a nice thumbnail. Is that a good thumbnail? Let's go like this. Get my hands out of the way. There you go. It's a good thumbnail right there. Thumbnail shot. Boom. Uh, anyway, so she holds that. You can tell. See, you can see in the back her hand just fits into the slot. If you're familiar with the Invisible Woman figure, that's how it works. And you want to see her? Give her a little pop. Little, little pop in her hands can be exchanged. She can offer you a soda. That's pretty much the whole figure. Uh, it was a blast. It was tough. Yellow always is. You got to be patient with yellow and use a lot of thin coats. I like to thin it out uh, with, thin out my paints a little bit with some 70% alcohol or any kind of alcohol that you have should work. You can also use water. Uh, I use water. I use alcohol for now. We'll see what I use in the future, but that's pretty much the figure. Uh, let's uh, let's throw it back to uh, AC. Take it away. Uh, welcome back. I hope you folks enjoyed that. I hope you found it uh, educational and useful and not a waste of your time. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or stuff that I didn't cover, please uh, put those questions in the comments below. I respond to every single one as long as, long as I see it. Uh, I'm sure there's a couple that I've missed here and there, but uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have about action figure that I made. I'm going to put her right here. I'm going to set her down and uh, I'm going to say thank you for tuning in. Be sure if you um, if you want to find me on social media, all the links all the links are below in the description, but uh, you can find me on Instagram at AC Toy Design. I also have a couple podcasts that I do. One horror podcast called Death by Podcast and one Star Wars podcast called I Have Spoken. Uh, what else? If you want to support this channel directly, this YouTube channel, uh, please think about joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash acToydesign, where you'll find her entire photo gallery along with her entire uh, behind the scenes, tutorials, the whole process. I document it all in uh, photos and every action figure that I do. It's all on there, along with uh, the Patreon exclusive podcast that I do called You Like Toys. And we just hit, we just hit episode 70, I believe, seven zero. That's a lot of episodes which is usually a Q&A, so we'll be able to talk about uh, action figures we collect and questions from the Patreon uh, community over there. So be sure to check that out. There's so many different tiers, a buck a month. It's not going to break anybody, so check that out if you want. And uh, aside from that, I hope you all are staying warm. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure you get your oats. Yeah. And I will see you in the next video. All right, you guys be safe. Thank you for being here. Thumbs up.
Sit, Muji, sit. Good dog. What?